Struggling to smother the deadly impacts of wildfires, this time in Albania, spurred on by parched soil and dry winds. As data confirms, September broke another global record. Copernicus, a climate monitoring agency, shows temperatures off a 30-year average every September. And all the red is above average, and this September, a red spike. It's half a degree hotter than the previous hottest September. So to break a record by half a degree from the nearest month it is a huge amount. 2023 is on track to bust through a heat ceiling marked by extreme fires, floods and heat. The data only underscoring the human costs. It's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Feels like a new ferocious phase. It feels to me like we don't understand this very well. Um, I feel like the climate system has a lot of surprises in store for us, and I don't think they're going to be pleasant surprises. What's driving it? Ocean temperatures, which started rising early spring, have stayed warm. Wildfires unleashed more carbon dioxide emissions, and that's on top of the high levels of fossil fuel emissions driving up temperatures. And El Nino, a powerful weather system, is adding warmth. It's huge. It's a super-sized El Nino. Canada echoes the global trend. Hudson Bay is about four or five degrees warmer than normal. Up in the Beaufort Sea, it's almost uh, three degrees warmer than normal. In the Pacific, in the Atlantic, and then how the oceans go, so goes the, the kind of season you're headed to. Crunching the data on the climate crisis is part of a strategy to move towards more meaningful targets to bring down the heat. I would like to believe that we're at an inflection point. We've been like the proverbial frog in the boiling pot of water, and we haven't really started moving out of that danger in earnest. That's what we have to do now. In face of predictions that 2024 could top records today. So Susan, we're obviously experiencing these extremes, but there's also a lot of data coming out very quickly. And it, and it leaves you with the sense that there is something else you know, driving the pace of these reports. You're right, politics. I mean, we're at a very critical time in the climate calendar. There's this big COP conference next month in Dubai, and climate scientists and activists are really worried about governments pulling back on their commitments and their targets on renewables and other things. And so they want to keep this kind of data and the images from this summer and now this fall front and center to apply pressure. And that's why this is coming out. All right. Good to know. Susan Ormerston, thank you. Welcome.